Hi guys, I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to the second episode of this week's theme of bass whaling. So today we'll be focusing on the North Atlantic right whale. So to start off, let me give you a little bit more background information about why these whales are called right whales. So their scientific name is Eubalena glacialis. It's quite hard to pronounce. And as I mentioned before, in today's video, we'll focus on the North Atlantic right whale, but it is important to note that there's another type of right whale that exists, and these are called the South Atlantic right whales. So let's move on to the physical description of these enormous creatures. So the North Atlantic right whale has a disproportionate body distribution. In fact, their head will account for 33% of their whole body length. Also, as you move further down uh, their body, you can observe their black and broad tail, which is deeply knotted in the center while still having smooth edges. Also, uh, whales have uh, blowholes, which can be compared to human nostrils, and they can surprisingly blow up to five meters high, which is about twice as tall as your Christmas tree. So you can imagine how tall it goes. Also, What's really cool about these whales and what distinguish them from other whales is the callosities uh, on their bodies. So as you can see in these pictures, callosities are uh, irregular white patches of tissues. Now let's talk a bit more about numbers. So a North Atlantic right whales will weigh about 70 to 100 tons, which is around the weight of a normal size aircraft. As for their size, females will be longer than males. And as you may know, uh, whales are really uh, known for their oil. And surprisingly, a single whale can fill up to 50 barrels of oil. So now that we've talked about what these uh, right whales look like, it is important to learn about their whereabouts and their natural habitats. So these North Atlantic right whales will normally be found in temperate and subarctic waters most specifically in the Pacific Ocean. They're a really big fan of coastal and shelf water, and this is where they will most commonly be found. As for their migration route, they will migrate to higher latitudes in the summer while uh, migrating to lower latitudes in the winter. As for their habitats, they will normally base um, their needs, and that's how they will choose their habitats. So for example, one habitat could be called the breeding habitat because this is where a uh, conception happens. Or another one could be called the feeding habitat because this is where these wells will, will go to uh, feed themselves. So now let me introduce you to an interesting fact about the name giving to these wells. So as far back as the 11th century, whales men used to call the right well the right one. So this expression sounds quite strange at first, but it was well thought of. In fact, they used to call it the right one because it was the perfect whale to catch. Indeed, these whales were found close to shore, as well as being extremely slow swimmer, which made, made them easy to catch. Also, they were considered to be gentle, which preventing the whalers to be in any type of danger when they were near the whales. And um, these North Atlantic right whales also stay afloat once they're killed, which again makes it easier for the whalers to bring them to shore. As for the reproduction and the longevity of these whales, they're known to live quite a, a long life. So in fact, they have the longevity of 67 years. And it's interesting to note that during most of their lives, they would uh, circulate in small group of 12 mammals or less. As for reproduction, uh, babies at birth measure around six meters in length, so they're quite long, and they will measure twice as much at 18 months. Also, I think it is quite interesting to mention that females right whales have a really strong inclination to protect their offspring. So for example, they're known to position themselves between their babies and any kind of danger. So they have this uh, maternal instinct that could be compared to the maternal instinct that your mother has for you. So now let's learn a bit more about the North Atlantic right whale's food habits. 
So these whales would gather their food by skimming the surface of the ocean along with their mouth wide open. That means that they take uh, a large amount of seawater through their mouth. Also, their primary food sources are uh, larval, barnacle, and krill, <laughs> which is an unusual type of food for us. <laughs> okay, so we explore many aspects of the North Atlantic right well, but I think it's important for you guys to learn a bit more about the relationship with us humans. So for the longest time, people were hunting whales without really worrying about what would happen to them in the future until 1935. In 1935, the first international agreement towards the protection of these whales happened. But it is only in 1946 that the International Whaling Commission signed on on the protection of these species. Sadly, despite the effort of many individuals for the protection of these whales for the past years, illegal activities still occur today. And to stop them, we need to advocate for them. And this is why video like these ones really educate you about why we need to protect, protect these whales. Also, as I mentioned before, the North Atlantic uh, right whales are considered to be now endangered species. I think it was quite interesting to mention that um, Basque whalers were um, actors in the decline of these whales. Why, you wonder? They were actually the primary target of Basque whalers. So that means they would hunt them a lot, which brought them to be endangered species today. So I hope that you liked today's video, and I hope that you will be here next week to learn about Basque whaling a little bit more in our third episode of this week's series. So thank you and have a good day.